Man, it was it was life changing. I mean, when Nick threw that final pitch that struck the kid out, and you know, running on the field, you, you never know what it's gonna be like until you do it. And then once you do it, it's like it's everything you ever could have imagined and more. And and everybody was super ecstatic. And it was just it was more like on you didn't even realize it when you're in the time, and then you look back and you're like, wow, like we did that, you know. Uh, I think it meant more than, you know, what I thought at the time. You know, I was just a freshman. I was like, oh, you know, we won state. I was pretty desensitized to how, you know, since that was my first year, you know, how important that was and how, um, you know, in the history of Craig F baseball, there's only been, you know, a number of state championships, two or three um, in, the, in the recent uh, history. Our first, the first state championship that we won was 1983. And, um, we were fortunate we had an outstanding ball club and um, beating I think that was Boys Tech that year um, was really a, a feather in our cap because Boys Tech has had a strong baseball program over the years. Well then we came back the following year 84 with a good strong nucleus of the kids that we had on that 83 so I think that helped. I mean the second one probably was a little bit easier from the standpoint that the guys on the club um, more or less knew what to expect. Um, the pressures are still there, obviously, but um, they'd been through it before. And I think if you, whatever you're doing in life, if you've been through it once, the second, third times are easier just because of the experience. Uh, when, when, I, when I got to Craig in 93, and uh, Coach Suter was, was the head coach, and I went to him that winter and I said, hey, I'm a new teacher here, and I, well, I'd love to be part of your program. I, whatever you'd like me to do, I just want to be part of it and get after it with you. And uh, he took me under his wing right away. I, I was his assistant, I think, in different uh, roles for about 12 years uh, until 2005 when Coach decided not to go anymore. But uh, the, I think it was in 98 uh, when we won. We won the state title in 98. And we were kind of a Cinderella story. And, uh, you know, you get to the state tournament, and I think we had eight losses on the year. So it was by, I think it was by far we had the most losses of any team there. And I don't know if teams overlooked us, you know, because, like, oh, they're coming here, they're finished third, fourth in their league. And our, stay, our numbers weren't that tremendous. But it was like our guys, it was whatever it was, they figured out the roles they were going. Um, and uh, it, was, it was awesome because, like, in high school, we didn't get, I never got a chance to go to the state tournament. Um, so it, it was my first, it was my first go at it. And I was like, I don't want to say a little kid in the candy store, but I, I, I'm, you know, I was a pretty young coach at that time. I was like, I was just excited to be there, and it was just, it's just a tremendous feeling to be part of, to be part of that. Um, that was my first go at that, but boy, it, it sure, it sure gives you uh, something to, to want to get back there. Hey, guys, hey, know where we're hitting. Know where we're hitting. Go, cool, boys. We got chugging now. Moody! need to watch this. You gotta use your water to clean off the top. Too valuable. I'm going to dirt. I'll drink dirt. Vic stepped right in and uh, took off from there, of course, with his, his baseball background at Beaver Dam, which is a good baseball community, and then the success that he had at the JV level, uh, getting the kids ready for the next level at the varsity where we were at. Um, uh, it was, I've, I've been blessed with good coaches and, and topped off by Coach Herbs. He's kind of a second dad to me. With when we're around sports and then like he still comes to our games uh, you'll catch him we'll, we'll turn around he'll be standing right behind us at the fence um, we'll have conversations about stuff like that and um, I hope when I'm 80 years old that I'm even close to operating how he operates it's amazing to me um, but what was really neat when I came on and I was with him for a long time like I said like 12 years as it went through um, he would take me through the process of things he started taking me along to the all-conference meetings um, things like that and uh, when, when I got the opportunity uh, to interview in 2005 for the head job uh, it was beneficial for myself knowing a lot of those little things as to how it operates where we did things and that kind of stuff instead of going from not knowing anything um, those things like that helped me tremendously in the transition. 
Coach loves Vic and is a big promoter, follower, do anything for him, and, and that's, that's Coach Suter's M.O. Um, he's got a heart of gold and, like I said, it, very endearing to Vic Herbst. And, you know, he knows that the program's in good hands when he left it. You know, when, 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 I, when I got started in 2005, um, you know, you have people that, you know, they, they know what Craig Baseball had done and what Coach Suter accomplished and, and that sort of stuff. And so I, I, I was replacing an unbelievably successful program that had won the only three team state titles for boys in our school's history, things like that. So I mean, there was a lot there to keep this going. We're good, I think, right? First and thirds were good. Yes, okay. Front coverage were good. Defense were good there. That's okay. It's energy from the seventh inning should be like it is in the first inning today, okay? Break on three. One, two, three. Uh, in 2015, you know, when we, when we won that, um, that was a special group, man. It was a good team. We've had some good teams over the years, and it's like you start looking at numbers compared to other ones and that, but uh, that, that was an amazing run. That, that's one of those ones where it's, you know, it's the uh, get to the top of the mountain thing, and uh, to get there is, there's no feeling like it. Like more than anything, it was a culture change for our program. You know, we had been on a little stint away from, um, um, from state appearances. We had been on a stint away from conference, from conference wins, and now we're coming off our third straight conference conference championship, and I think it was a culture change, and when you see 2015 state champ, um, every year you're bringing expectations, and every year you're bringing in new guys who are expected to do their jobs um, like their predecessors before them, and so um, it was just kind of a thing for us where we were just like, this is what's expected of us, you know, anything less is... I wouldn't want to say disappointment because obviously you can have a great season without winning a state championship, but it was kind of like a now we go, like, let's get on it. Let's, let's keep working our butts off so that we can, you know, hopefully get back here. You know, it's been kind of an up and down journey, but over the course of the years, we've been nothing but successful. Um, you know, I can count on one hand how many losses we've had in the last four years. So you were inducted in the Baseball Hall of Fame, and that's a Baseball Coaches Hall of Fame. It's obviously a big thing. Do you think Victor would someday have a shot at that? Oh. Or, or what do you think? It would take for him? What does he have to do in his career to get there? All Vic has to do is just keep doing what he is doing. Um, uh, Vic is made of the right cloth. He's got, he's had a great um, experience, baseball experience. He's got a good fundamental working knowledge. He'll be just fine. <laughs> to uh, have someone like him say that about me. Very, very humbling, very humbling. Um, I just hope I can fulfill it. Um, like I said, what he means to me and stuff like that, it's amazing. Um, hey, you shouldn't, shouldn't have done this, shouldn't have went that route on me. Uh, yeah, uh, sh shoot. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, can, I, I see Coach saying that, you know, and uh, uh, like I said, I just, I just hope that I can live up to that, you know, type thing, and uh, he is, he means a lot to me, and his two cents always like that, you know, important. People who have Coach Herps um, as a teacher in class, you know, they, they see the very vanilla side of Coach Herps, and once you have him as a coach, you get to see a different side of him, obviously, because you're around him so much more, and you get to see a side that really cares um, about what you're doing uh, on the field as well as off the field. Um, he's definitely great at instilling uh, what really matters and, and uh, some good life values and life skills. And um, I think that's not something that everybody always sees from Coach Hurst because they just don't see that side of him because they're not around him enough. When we get off the diamond, I still have a relationship with you off the diamond. It means, it, it means the world to me. Because at the end of the day, we're playing baseball and we want to do well and hold ourselves accountable. But almost every one of us is going to get a job doing something. And it's not going, it's not... Uh, playing baseball. It's going to be whatever it might be. Um, and I hope that what we do on the diamond carries over to what they do in life. Uh, be a productive member of society and do things right. Be a good dad. Be a good big brother or whatever it might be. Um, I just hope it carries over. Um, and I think those things instill yourself to being good on the diamond as well. Um, and th that, that stuff just, I, th that, I can't get enough out of that. Um, 
that is why I do what I do. Um, when I get stuff like that that comes back and like those former players that I get calls from or I call them up and check on I me, mean, that, that, that truly is what it is what we're doing, no doubt.